do it for the culture. Culture, they gon' buy like vultures. Vulture, wait. He started fucking with line, right? But he was so slick. Hmm. So, under, I mean, this man was like amazing. I thought he was the slickest nigga on the planet, right? He had gold braces. He had a taper like a youngster. He was he was just slick, a clean dude, right? And uh, and he had some dope. And we and 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 me and you talked about it before. We used to give him hand signals, like, and just you got to look the other way, act like nothing happened. <laughs> he come drop your package off. You know what I'm saying? So I can see that you naturally got it from. It's like. This story is amazing to me. It's like full circle. Like we have Frick smoking, you going into the weed business on your own. It's like, imagine if Al Capone or them motherfuckers. Well, they do tell their stories, but pre-prohibition and how that shit was. This shit got to be documented. It ain't nothing embarrassing about it to me. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, that shit no. is not selling crack. It ain't, <laughs> it ain't yeah. the same. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, so when did pops like start? Acknowledging you like for real like so he know what you're doing he hearing about what you got going on When did he start being like or giving you maybe giving you advice in the game or just saying anything about it? So 2008 my youngest daughter was born and uh, I just told Bro, we were staying in the house of his in the 80s and um, He knew I was growing so when I moved there first thing he said well, I'm growing in my house They got the rods in the back bro yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> set it up, ran the power under the house, free power in the back, all the shit, dug the trench, everything. And I just called him over one day. I said, Dad, I'm going to show you something. He came over, we opened the garage. He was like, he's like, you really? I was like, look, let's sit down and talk. We sat down right in the room, chopped it up. I'm like, this is what I do, Pops. Like, I went to school for this. I went to Oaks Dam. Like, I'm not just selling weed just to sell weed. I'm like, this is a business for me. And he was like, I got to right. respect it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was it. It was, do your thing. Yeah. Now... For the record, I'm not passing because I got the sniffles, so I don't want y'all to no, 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 that's good. No, I'm no, talking no. To, to the people. Okay. Oaks the dam. Uh-huh. What's the dude that started that? I forgot the white boy name. The white boy name. But is it true that he gave, when they was really start tripping the feds, that he gave those businesses to his employees? Like a lot of that shit downtown? So when I left, I graduated from Oaks Dam March of 09. We was one of the, we was third or fourth class that they had. When we left, everything was still good. Okay. So all that stuff that happened with the feds, I have no idea what happened because we was gone by then. Okay. So I think that might have been how it went, but a lot of people that were there when I was there are gone except Dale Scott. She's one of the last people that's still there. Good lady, real, real good lady. So it's still going on right now? Yeah, Oakstown's still going right now. You can still go down there and get classes and everything. And all our so, staff, once we up and rolling, get to go there for free. Oh, man. So, so, Bree. Yes, sir. The move to California. Hmm. How did that come about? Man, it's and, wait, and was it cannabis that brought you to California? Hmm. It's the longest story, and I'm going to make it short as possible. Um... Worked at an investment firm for 10 years, operations, hated what I did. Okay. Had the opportunity to, to buy into dispensaries in uh, Denver. Okay. Wait, through your job? No, no, no. No, just the all. opportunity. Just a random opportunity. Okay. Felt like, okay, I can apply what I know from doing this to something I actually love and care about. Um, be a little less stressed out. Okay. So, moved to Denver. Uh, I didn't want to just have ownership in situations. I wanted to know how to run a place. I didn't want to just walk in and just, you know, be told whatever and, and have to do whatever if you get my drip. Right. So, I'm like, okay, I go in humbly from, you know, operations at Morgan Stanley to a situation where I'm making $11 an hour to, to bud 10. You know what I right. mean? And it, it was tough. It was definitely a lot of struggle, a lot of a lot of difficult times. You know, being from Atlanta, moving somewhere like Denver was also very difficult. So you actually bud tended in Denver. Yeah, I started did, did, off You know, I'm starting to find out a lot more people was bud tenders that really, because yeah. motherfuckers thinking that they're going to get the information and jump up and get no, a dispenser. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. have to know the, the, in, the in and out of every yeah. single moment of running a dispensary. I even watched 
y'all hiring process. I, right. I, I watched the people like I was like, damn, these motherfuckers is experts. Yeah, yeah, like the yeah, people yeah. in there. Yeah, 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 yeah they yeah, good. Sure. Definitely, you have to be able to to know what you're doing, what you're selling. You have to know every aspect of this business. You can't just walk in because you've done something else somewhere else and say you know how this works. It doesn't work. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And so, long story short, I worked my way up to a general manager position of a couple of different dispensaries pretty quickly because of my operations experience and was able to apply it there and then just learned as much as possible, soaked it up. The deals that I went to Denver for didn't go through. They weren't the best, you know, idea for me. Um, they weren't in my best interest. And so, it was like, okay, well, I don't really want to stop doing what I came here to do. Like, I love this. I'm good at it. You know what I mean? The numbers that I was able to create at that store... Um, with very little resources were incredible. You know what I'm saying? I increased right. revenue over 188% on average. Wow. So, and this is daily. This is not monthly, annually. This is daily. And so I knew I was good at that shit. I'm like, okay, I want to do it still. Um, long story short, we saw Desley Brooks on Vice. You know what I mean? And she now, was just talking now, about... Now, <laughs> you saw Desley Brooks mm -hmm. on Vice. On Vice. You're in Denver. I'm in Denver. I'm just watching TV. I'm watching Weed a Kid or Bonga Petite or something. Just watching. Now casual, I, watching I'm TV. not. I'm not gonna lie because I'm a part of. I'm, I'm a part of these sheep, right? <laughs> and I watch Vice all the time, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? But I don't know. Like I don't know if I would have seen that if my. But you watched that because I'm. I'm. I'm making the, my point is. Right. All a lot of people that's gonna be watching this is from around here. Right. And we sleep, y'all. I mean, just straight up, like, but go ahead. I just, I just, it fucked me up. Like, okay. I'm like, okay, you in Denver watching Desley Brooks on yeah, Vice, yeah, yeah. and you pop up with a club. And okay. She, she, long story short, you know, she, she was talking about giving minorities the opportunity to, to own dispensaries. And so I was with my mom. My mom is a paralegal at a um, cannabis business law firm. I like your mom. I, I appreciate she that. Told me I was she, uh -huh. she told me I was handsome. She told me I was handsome. I don't know if you remember, but I came in the club and it was like the soft grand opening. And she and she was like, No, ain't nobody helping him. And she stopped you and she was like, Mama, I'm, I'm doing something. What are they, like, what did they like? You? She lit, though. Well, she's, a, she's a senior paralegal at a cannabis business law firm. So she did all the compliance stuff, I did all the operations oh, stuff. Wow. And so she basically, um, we saw the TV and then we kind of looked at each other it was like a movie. We, you know, hit the, did you hear her kind of thing? We rewound it and she basically was saying, was saying everything we ever dreamt of. And so my mom grabbed her laptop. It's a Sunday. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, what you doing? She's like, you know what I'm doing. I'm sending her yeah. an email. We got to meet with her just out the strength of wanting to say, hey, thank you for your initiative. We appreciate it. You know, I'm just going to shake your hand for five minutes. And she ended up inviting everything, us to everything else that she was doing for the rest of the weekend to push the initiative. And so there were a couple of things that she had to, you know, to fight for and go around. People don't understand, you know, they talk about the program, but what they don't realize is you can't go into a political situation and get every single thing you want. Right. You have right, to be right. able to give and bend and, and, and to get the most of what you can out of the situation. So the program obviously, you know, is an incredible start, an incredible foundation. Are there things that can help it? Hell yeah, she knows that she fought for him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so to be able to meet her and see what she had going on and what she wanted to do and, and just for her to invite us to be a part of that process was incredible. Um, we went back to Denver. We sat in front of the TV a couple months later watching it hit the floor, watch it pass. <laughs> so we were like, oh shit, like yeah. this is really, really about to be what it is. Like we gotta go, you know right. what I'm saying? Like right. we, we gotta go. And so my mom moved here. I continued to general, uh, be the general manager of my spot oh just to continue God. to learn and grow, you know what I mean? And figure out as much as possible. Now I'm just like searching for knowledge instead of casually yeah. coming across it, you know? And um, we came here, man, I had someone, so we were looking for, for someone to help us out because the way the program is meant to work out is, is to be in favor of someone who went through whatever in open. You understand right. what I'm saying? Right. It's not for me from Atlanta to come in, but what about now? Mind you, I'm on my own path and have my own dream, my own whatever. Right. But this is meant for someone from Oakland. So okay. we reached out to the people that we had here, just asking some, some, some of the people, do you have people that fit this criteria? You know what I'm saying? They're reaching out. They're trying to help these people in Oakland. Do you have someone that can fit that mold? Got a couple of people. My mom hit me. She's like, yo, so-and-so wants us, to, wants us to meet this dude. His name is Alfonso Blunt. I said, wait, what? <laughs> she said his name is Alfonso Blunt, some guy, but I said, wait, his name is what? Like, I'm like, I don't even really care about nothing else you're talking about. His name is Alfonso Blunt. Right. She said, yeah. I said, man, his last name is Blunt, for real? Yeah. I'm, I'm still, and she looked at me like, yeah, damn, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, 
Bro, we about to have a dispensary. I ain't even met this man yet. Okay. But I know how my path has been going, and it's been going in the right direction, and everything that I've applied to this situation has been beneficial. And so I know that everything that sits on my path, not everything, that's not fair. Majority of the things that sit mm -hmm. on my path are meant to be. And for this man, it's last thing to be blunt, what? <sighs> then I met him? What? Wow. You in the city like that? You did this and that? Oh, so damn, you grew, you know this one, you know that one, you worked in the city, blah, 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 blah. You willing to do this? You willing to do that? What? Wow. What okay. you doing for the rest of your life, shorty? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know can we go, can we go make this happen? And, um, and that's what we've been doing. That's, so cannabis did bring me here, very long story short. Okay. But I said I was going to make it short, I lied. No, you know no, what I'm saying? That's, that's what it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a lot. Was, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot. You had to tell it like that. <laughs> it's a lot. That's, that's, that's a beautiful thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, upon y'all meeting, um, you said y'all hit it off. Yeah. Right? And uh, so, what did you think of Bree when you. Well, first of all, how did you know that call was going to happen and how did that go? So, for me personally, at the time, I didn't know shit. I was working at Tesla. They had called me off the street from detailing, seen some of my stuff, and wanted me to be a detail, uh, detail trainer. So I negotiated. Wait a minute. Uh -huh. Hold on. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, I don't let motherfuckers get past nothing, right? <laughs> okay. So for everybody that been seeing this nigga on Instagram, right? This was Proud Papa's detail. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. This man. Um, I like to commend my folks and give them their credit because yes. he was putting just as much work in with that shit and being a father and a family man as he does his business. When you see him out here, the nigga can be, he can be abrasive. You know what I'm saying? Because he's serious about his business. And I like that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got to go after it, right? That's so I just wanted to stop you right there and say, that. Tesla caught, got in contact with you. Mm -hmm. Got in contact with me. Be because of your detail. To be a trainer, though. To show everybody else how to do it. To be a Negotiated my own pay. Bam. I was in. Uh, started in September. I got a call in October of last year. Uh, not last year. It's going to be another year now. But October 17th, uh, Mike Marshall called me. Uh, singer, five got five on it. Um, rumors, all that. Yeah. Homeboy of mine. Met him about three years ago from sending him seeds. Just... Followed him through Yuck, because Yuck, my nigga, I said, oh, that's dude. I like him. He growing. Let me send me some seeds. Build a relationship. Cool. He hit me Let's slow down one more okay. time. Okay. This is, I got five on it, right? All right. No disrespect to Yuck. No disrespect to none. But that song would not have been. What it is. Without what it was without Mike Marshall. Am I correct for all the motherfuckers? A million percent. Room, right? I got five on like I don't even know if that shit can be sung by anybody else. <laughs> I don't even know if it can be it's perfect, right? right. It's right. perfect. It's the per and once again, also, it is a weed song. Period. Right. They will never die. The man <laughs> that's singing the hook for the multi platinum mm -hmm. song, I got five on it. Mm -hmm. man, they is calling you about some cannabis business. Yes. In legal cannabis business mm -hmm. in Oakland, yes, and you've been sending him seeds and buds, just, and that's a good relationship off that. We linked up. Just I'm a cool dude, you know. Me? Everybody mind should be like this. So, <laughs> so he, right. he hit me, and he called me. First thing out of his mouth, he said was, "Of course, hey, how you doing? Because I'm real big on speaking. You know, if I ever text you, I will say blessed whatever day it is. Right. I don't do no, you know. Speak to me first when you text me. But he called me. He said, "Hey, he don't smoke. He said, "Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Mind I'm good." He said, you ever caught a case in Oakland? I looked at the phone. I'm like, what the fuck he asked me that for? But I'm like, why? <laughs> so he proceeded to tell me why. And he said some key words that I heard while we were in Oaksterdam. He used the word reformations. When he said that, I pulled up my laptop that I got from Tesla. And I started typing it in. And as he talking, I'm typing, put up the equity program, looking, seeing it all. I'm still listening, but I'm looking like, damn, they're really finna make a way for people to get clubs. So as he talking, like, man, I got some people, da 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 I'm like, well, I'm poor. So what do you need out of me? I'm like, I'm making whatever I'm making at Tesla, but I'm poor, bro. So what you, you know, what you need from me? He was like, they don't need nothing. They just need you to have caught a case in Oakland, live in Oakland a certain <laughs> amount of time, and I think that was it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, I'll go, I'll go meet with him. He gave me Faye, her mom, gave me her number. I called her. She told me briefly about what they were doing. I was like, all right, cool, cool, cool. You sound legit. But I still was like, whatever. It's going to be some bullshit. I ain't going to lie. Huh. 
Um, told my wife about it, my right hand man, she know, I go, all things go through the ward, and she was like, fuck it, it can't hurt. I'm like, right, it can't. We link mm -hmm. up, I bring my youngest daughter with me, we meet at Red Robin in Concord. I offered them food, they didn't want none, they just wanted water, got it right down to business. <laughs> Ten minutes later, business. <laughs> they left. Me and Lil Mama ride home, I'm like, what you think about them? She's like, I like them. Bree's really tall. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's cool. I'm like, that's she's her nice and she's friendly. Yeah, she was like, that's oh, cool. So what y'all got going on? I said, we might get in the business together, blah, blah, blah. And she's my youngest daughter. had met Mike Marshall before, so she knew that whole link. So she was like, oh, okay. And I was great. I, Bree, as soon as we met, it was an instant like, like we knew each other forever. Like it was some weird shit. It, it was just straight. I knew she could pick up on stuff that I hadn't done in years. And then I knew she knew her shit. Yeah. And then I also knew, with her knowing her shit, I knew what I could, you know, bring to the table, what I could learn, blah, 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 blah. And it just, it clicked. We really just hit it off. Like, it couldn't be, I don't really know no way to describe it, because it just, it, it, it was it. It was instant. Yeah. It was instant. So, so when y'all met, and y'all hit it off like that, mm -hmm. what's the, what's the timeline from actually meeting, going through the process, and actually opening. Less than two months. Oh, okay. I'm gonna say, yeah. say till opening. A little over here. A little over here. And two months to get. Okay, now explain to the people about two this months. equity program okay. and, the, and and the lottery and shit. How this shit work? So basically, they had over a hundred people apply for the equity license. So the equity license basically says someone with these situations, someone who's been arrested for cannabis, or somebody who lives in an area that's been heavily affected by arrest for cannabis, they are eligible. And so there are eight licenses in total that they're giving out for retail space, and four of them have to go to people that have been through these situations. And so they have to get 50% of the license. So no okay. matter what, you have to get half of the license, half of that is yours. Now the best way for the program to work, long story short, is for you to link up with somebody that can teach you how to do the shit and you can be a part of the business or whatever. Or if you just want to take a check and go home. But I mean, right. for people who really want to be in the industry, basically. Um, and so, out of the hundred and some odd people that applied, 36 made it through the program, basically. Oh, it's not the program, I'm sorry. 36 made it through um, to be able to start the program. They okay. were eligible to, to go into the lottery. And so the lottery had... 36 balls in a, a little wheel, you know what I mean? And, and Tucky got there first. Let me back up. I'm sorry. I'm going to take a quick second. I'm driving. I'm panicking, right? Because okay. I'm, I'm, I'm like riding around in circles downtown trying to find parking. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, you know how that goes. I get to the point where, Lord, forgive me. I'm damn near cussing God. And I'm like, stop playing with me. You know I need to get this dispensary. I need to find a parking spot. I'm going, him. But I'm like, ah, I'm getting irritated. I make a right after this. I make a right and I park because somebody pulls out the spot and I'm like, we're about to get a dispensary. I walk in, he already picked the ball. I was like, I know he picked the right one. You know what I'm saying? I just like, everything just felt calm and like it's, it's happening, it's right, it's going to happen. So they put 36 balls in a wheel and the last four of them are the ones that get the dispensary. You know, it's not the first four. Okay. So you want to be someone who doesn't get called until it's the last four. Wow. So for the 32 people are getting called, I'm panicking. He's chill, right? Around 20, so they're count, counting down, you know, 36, 35, 34, 33. Around 20, I calm down. He starts tripping. Like, my energy, like, our energy shifted. Like, yeah. I calm down, he starts tripping. He's like, oh, sis, we should have, da We should have, blah, blah, I'm like, bro, I feel you. But we about to walk out of here with a dispensary. And this man said, you're right. And sat there and chill. And we just chill. People are going nuts. Every time that number gets off, fuck. Number damn. gets off. God damn, people slamming stuff on the yeah. ground. People because <laughs> as it's getting closer, you really feel like you about to be that one. And as I'm hearing them all spaz out, I'm like, that's not going to be us, bro. Like, we, I'm looking at this man. I'm knowing who he is. I'm knowing what I know about him just off of meeting him. Like he said, it felt instant. Like this wasn't yeah. just like a, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. You know what I mean? This yeah. was like, this is it. You right. know what I'm saying? And so I'm like, man, I know him. I know my spirit, my soul, what I've done in my community. I know who we are as people. And I know we met for a reason. You know what I'm saying? And so because of that, I'm not worried anymore. And they uh, they called number five and it wasn't us. That meant the last four, wow. we in there. Oh my God. And he jumped up. Said praise Yahweh. 
I crouched down, started crying. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, it was crazy, man. It's and so I cold. Sorry, to cut you off. No, yes. Out of all the four people, balls that was left, none of the other people were there. So the city picked all their balls. I'm the only one picked an actual ball. Oh wow! For the shit, other people that won. Wow. Yeah. Only one. Yeah. And then I fucked around and rewatched it. Like watched the tape. I don't know. If, have, you, have you watched it? You still haven't watched it. No, man, so I, I can't give the chips. It was so fucking crazy, and you know how I feel about the Heavenly Father, how I feel everything is done, we just walk on a path to get to it. Our ball was sitting on top of the balls. You can see it on the camera. Clear as day, I-26 on top of the balls, and three instances on the camera. There's two times where the balls dropped out, and the lady hadn't rolled it, where she had to put balls back in and re-roll. There was another time she rolled, and two balls dropped out, and it was only supposed to be one. So it was hell of times, and then from uh-huh. 15 to 5, we had an eye. It was bingo ball, so we had I-26. From 15 to 5, it was five eyes that got picked out of the whole thing. From 15 to 5, three of them got caught. Damn. They fucked around and would have had to man. take you to the hospital. Come on, man. man. It was you don't destiny, that was some man. destiny shit. Like, yeah, it was destiny. There was no... It was gonna have, nothing going to change that. Nothing going to change that. So once you get the, the lottery part over with, now you're eligible to enter the program. And so now you have 90 days to find a space. You know what I mean? And it's like, okay, you got to go hunting for property, basically. Yeah. Get an LOI and a, a letter of intent saying that you plan on getting a lease with this person, at least to start the process. Y'all didn't bullshit. Y'all and got so, napper. Yeah, man. We had to run around and make it happen. And so we, we started that process. And luckily, um, everything kind of just fell into place. Obviously, there were hurdles to jump over. You know what I'm saying? Things to avoid, people to avoid. Um, what's the What's the zoning like for that? So... We're in a green zone. Basically, they have certain zones in certain areas that basically say you can have a cannabis uh, retail space here. And is it in? It, are any of them uh, a certain distance from each other? Yeah, they have to be. Uh, I think six hundred feet away in Oakland. Oh, okay, that ain't bad. Not, yeah, it's a few bad. blocks type deal, yeah, or whatever. But yeah. we we picked a location that many people aren't really going to at this moment. We're seeing some people try to pop up, you know, coming soon. But. They trying to get you know, and I, I I'm glad you got a real Oakland person on your team, man. I, I feel like. You know what I'm saying? Like we gotta we gotta believe in a higher spirit, right? Whatever your belief is, because at the end of the day, you could have got some cornball gentrifier who said, I wanna go uptown with it, you don't know, woo 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 and you kinda gotta follow the lead, right? Uh, yeah, but I feel you. That yeah, could have happened. You know what I'm saying? But you got you got you got uh, you got a real cat from out here, like you know, everybody that talks about this shit said by the Coliseum? Like, what the fuck? Across, like, it, it, never in my life would I have thought.